about being co-op, how pricey would that be for the person who, who will buy into the co-op? So that depends on, you know, how it's going to be run. I can't give you the answer of how much that is. And so if your concern is the affordability of it, and that's what we want to know. So we're really just here to gather as much input from you guys based yeah. on your experiences in the cool, neighborhood. Sounds good. Uh, on the business standard, it seems to me that the most complicated possible thing to do would be to have a group call up. You have to have a board of directors responsible to people. You have to have some kind of source of capital where maybe you could get a grant from some Charles Schwab, something like that. But I think Marvis has got a good idea. I mean, obviously, yeah. you guys should maybe try to say the safe way about the for profit slot mm -hmm. in case that is something that moves forward. It just seems like we have a lot of grocery stores now, and the Trader Joe's also moved in. I, I'm not having deja vu because this is not the only project that's taken 10 years, like the BRT <laughs> out of Ben. Mm -hmm. Definitely was at meetings with people who've probably gone on to their reward and talking about what we're going to do with this parking lot that's been vacant since the 1906 quake, so we said 10 okay. years ago or so. It's such a remarkable that it's never been a building on the site in all these many years. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so hopefully you will get something, and maybe we could, we could, um, you know, you can have more meetings in the future once we get these things narrowed down. Is that what I heard? Yeah, we'll have a bigger town hall meeting. So that's why we have a sign-in sheet probably floating around somewhere. So if you contact information, we can call you or just look out for any flyers so we can give it to um, to your guys' uh, organization and you can share it. So um, that's uh, what the market is. Um, the next one is a community restaurant. Um, do you want to talk about it? Or? I'm going to do it in the hall. Okay, so from our community restaurant, um, where, I mentioned, where we put community in front of it is, you know, we wanted to serve this neighborhood. Um, uh, I don't know if folks are familiar with Mimi's Cafe, you know, Jones Street. Um, so that's like a primarily model for it. Um, so ideally, you know, it's low cost. Folks can come in there and they're welcome then uh, you uh, eat. So you guys have any questions on restaurants or any um, input on it? that's different into our uh, neighborhood that uh, uh, speaks to uh, the, uh, the ability of uh, TNDC, which is to say, well, we're a leader of this, that, and the other in our neighborhood, mm -hmm. and not to duplicate something that some of the smaller businesses already are doing. Um, so that should be our, our main goal is to uh, 
um, do something we can all be proud of, a project we are stamp behind is saying, well, this sounds like something this neighborhood can actually um, want to support and it's not duplicating any of the other existing uh, businesses. Because once you get into duplicative businesses you, that already exist, then that's your competitor. Mm -hmm. We already have like a lot of barber shops. I mean, I just give you, you look at your, your walk around, what we do have in the neighborhood and then what we don't have. Uh, and what what's closing in our storefronts because of, of whatever reason. So uh, how do we keep some of those kinds of businesses back into the neighborhood? Uh, and uh, keep all our storefronts um, um, open, particularly at nighttime. We need stuff, you know. So we want. I would like to see a business that's open um, up until you know, at least 12 midnight. Okay. I mean, it doesn't make some. You know, Mimi's closed at five. So that was a, a, that's a, that was a downer because I mean, at a certain time it's closed, and you know, uh, it has to be able to generate money in the after hours too, you know, after five or something. May I say that there's still a three restaurants you mentioned them that were open. And all of them was accessible to the And I think it's a good idea that you can have it again that way. Uh particularly about the and if you cannot afford to go to any fancy restaurants. And if you have one here, they go to it. If you have one here, they go to it. If you have one here, they go to it. I think we could if you so they can feel they we still have to one store and that's it. I think in Korea it was it isn't a bad idea really. If you have two of them going on at one time, that's fine. Because people are enjoying themselves, they have they feel a quality of life as we, as a result of being able to go in and to and you know just, just go to a nice eatery. It doesn't cost a lot of money. So Thank you. Those Thank those you. are all great inputs. Um so as uh, Mr. Malti already stated, you know, a food hall, which is essential. Oh, sorry. Um, one thing that Mimi's not going for, she opened at 7.30 in the morning. And when I moved down here, we had, every block had a small cafe in it. Most of those cafes uh, were forced to close by the health department because their uh, beds were cruddy, they weren't clean, and buildings have been remodeled, and the people who were there can't afford the new rents. So if you put a restaurant in, I think you should focus on something that is all inclusive for the whole neighborhood, so to speak, for all the different uh, cultural and um, <laughs> aspects. So breakfast, lunch, dinner. Um, and it does not include alcohol. I mean, we have a lot of alcohol restaurants now. What we need is restaurants that don't serve alcohol for the people who don't want alcohol. <coughs> and that, that is affordable. And affordable <coughs> is people who are on Social Security, SSI, GA, can afford a place to eat. Maybe if the TIDC charges zero rent, that could become possible. Well, um, nice yeah, um, just yeah. to mention, you know, like, it seems like um, TNDC is being more intentional on all their retail space to be more community serving, and that is something that TNDC would consider, especially throughout this process. Let's say there's a strong need of, let's say, a food hall. Everybody's yeah. saying a food hall, but we need this, this, this. Well, like food <laughs> comes from the trucks because yeah. they generate pollution, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But maybe some of those same companies might be interested in like, rotating. You know, it's not like what they did at that other hall on the market street. Had yeah. those kind of things going on. So that was required to be a little bit more effort, like somebody who's programming and works with TNDC, so that's more mm -hmm. complicated than if you could find a, somebody who could go in there. But as a businessman, and Joel will agree with you, I mean, the free market, I mean, can't you just put this proposal to use the different things that we would accept in there, a range of retail activating spaces, and see what the response is, right? We're not going to say, okay, we're going to narrow it down through community meetings from nine options to one and mm -hmm. say this is what we're going to do. Is, is that what you're saying? Or yeah. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Well, I, it seems like it's not really very practical. Some extent. Like, you might get more if you were a little bit wider. Maybe you need to do some business outreach before you finish the process to see if there's people who would want to do like a mission-oriented, like a B corporation where it's a new thing that's allowed where they can have a benefit, like mm -hmm. providing affordable food to lowest, lowest income people is what Marvis is talking about. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I make a decent income, and I don't go out to eat because I, I need the lorries. If you're gonna, we're going to go there. I mean, you're talking about 20 bucks just to have breakfast mm -hmm. ah. when you leave the tip. I mean, you know, I mean, I don't know what's going to go in there, but maybe something that you know tourists are paying, you know, 100 dollars a person mm -hmm. or, so, or more, I guess. Right. You know. So yeah, those are um, well, well. Part of the, why we narrowed down to the four proposals is because there are organizations out there that can take it over. Uh, and part of it is like we want to have some sort of ownership from the community, and that's what we're going throughout this process. Um, you know, um, so um, but yeah, those are all good points. But Deborah would like to. Talk I would like about to just explain to you about the food hall. This is just a, uh, one of the food proposals. A food hall is, is a way you can have several different vendors. It's some, similar to a food court. But anyway, like I said, it's like the food court. And you can have um, Chinese food, you can have soul food, you can have any kind of food you want that you know that the vendor would like to pick up and do it and we can work bring that into this food hall. And some of them have wheelchairs and tables where you can be able to sit down. So we're asking you, this is one of the concepts that we're asking you. We we just have four of them to bring to you. We're just, these are the ones that were brought to us, so we're just asking you to please vote on one of this, whichever one you think would be the best that would fit where we're at. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Is there going to be some, like, uh, some pathway to uh, to identify and, well, to like first identify, and then provide a pathway to, let's say, a local entrepreneur that is in the tenderloin that should have a restaurant. Right? Folks that do griddles outside, you know, on like for example, on like, like Turk Street. You know, I just bought the barbecue and the hot mm -hmm. So it'd be interesting to see if this would, you know, if you would create um, a certain percentage of the space to be um, uh, open and affordable to those entrepreneurs to, to enable them to you know, succeed Local. with their business. Local. Locals, yeah, to succeed with their businesses. So, you know, the person's not outside, you know, grilling on the street and you got a whole liner on the block, mm -hmm. but they're inside of there and, you know, they have this whole yeah. functional yeah. business, right? Well, you know, I can't answer your question if it's a yes or no, but I can turn around and say that seems to be something that you want to see, right? Well, I mean, you would want to see that from something okay. that's coming in the neighborhood, right? Because it's supposed yeah. to benefit the, the, the community. So if you put up a restaurant there, you got a guy around the corner that's like grilling, right? I mean, there's a mismatch there. You know, you're not looking at the guy around the corner, you know, that's doing the grilling and saying, okay, well, we do have this entrepreneurial spirit here. Yeah. Then let's work, let's say, even with the city, mm -hmm. mayor's office, whatever, and say, okay, what is a pathway to saying, going out to this person, doing outreach to this person, getting them ready, and then, Getting them into there, and they have X Y Z store. Yeah, that's a that's a good point, and that also have come up plenty of times in our community engagement process. Um, you know, other ideas that was brought up was a rotating, uh, well, particularly for the community restaurant, like a rotating type of food. Say, you know, somebody just want to try out a certain type of food, and they want to see if they can sell. Then we can do like a rotating business that way. Excuse but, me, but then. What would be the path from rotating? So if I rotate and I'm successful, and let's say I got like a year, mm -hmm. or let's say eight months, right? Mm -hmm. I'm successful eight months. I got a business going, but you know, uh, the next month is um, X Y Z food, right? Mm -hmm. So then what's my pathway from there? To say, okay, I'm going to have a permanent shop. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so I sorry, I see we have a hand in the back. Yeah, um, we have a lot of things on the agenda, so. Um, uh, we'll get to him and because it's a really important issue. But if you have so if you have specific things about this, uh, you know, come by them and build us more in depth feedback. But yeah, so it's all right, Kirk. Um, so, one of the things about the food court that I think is most appealing to me is and would be a great benefit to the neighborhood is that by doing it that way, you have several smaller independent stalls that could be represented by like several different business owners. People from the community could open up, we could work with, identify, and open up small booths, several of them, simultaneously, so that it provides an opportunity for someone to begin to develop a business 
hoping they can even move from there into a larger brick and mortar space somewhere down the road. But it would give startup businesses a place to go. Yeah. And some of those booths could even be uh, somebody making their own soaps or you know some clothes. I mean, like it doesn't even wouldn't have to necessarily all be food. It could be opportunities for various sort of opportunities to pop up in there. Yeah. And, I, and I just think that you know providing that sort of experiential. Um, People are looking more days, more these days, for quite a bit the experience of going to some place and, and enjoying the experience of being there and to provide that kind of environment. We have several different food vendors and, and perhaps even more. And there would be a community space as well, a communal space between all those vendors that could, you know, move them up, all kinds of things going on. Yeah. Those are great, Curtis. Yeah. And he did mention about like it's not just exclusively food. I mean, kind of think about like the fair building as well. So there's different. Cool. Things. And another thing too is where you are here is a lot of diversity in this area. So it could even be called diversity cafe. But, but globally inspired food, sustainable food that you can trace where it comes from, healthier foods. You know, less fried foods, more healthier foods. Um, I'll talk to you later. I ran a concept on this on Polk and Pine, and it's doing seven thousand dollars a day. People want to know what they're eating. Mm -hmm. Kind of, you are what you eat, mm -hmm. and they want to know where they where they can find it. They want it fresh. This area, more than any area in San Francisco, promotes diversity. I mean, you should do it citywide, but especially in Tokyo. Thank you. Uh, real quick. Oh, uh, wait. You need more places around here that accept EBT. Um, so just in terms of time, I uh, will just kind of go ahead and talk about um, the kitchen itself. You know, so kind of mentioned like there's a lot of SROs with their own, they don't have their own kitchen or they have to share it. So this particular one is another proposal where you have a kitchen with, you know, restaurant grade equipment that folks can come in and uh, use. Well, there's, you know, two options on it. So, Matthew, do you want to talk about both that option? Um, yeah, well, one of the options would be just a community kitchen, and that's, you know, for the folks in the community, like you were saying, there is a lot of SROs without kitchen space. So it will provide a clean space with all the utensils and things for the community to use. Okay, also one is a, a micro commercial kitchen, which would be someone maybe from the community coming preparing something and then sending it out to be sold. You know, so that's one of the options there is for the kitchen itself. So, sounds like, uh, what do you call it, when you send in meals or catered in, like a catering it, it could be, It could be a catering yeah. spot, you know. Um, a good model in terms of a commercial uh, or community uh, commercial kitchen is uh, La Cucina in the Mission. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, um, I can't remember who mentioned it, but in terms of like, you know, some folks might not know the know-how in terms of like starting their own like food cart, for example. So, make organization like La Cucina can help them. You know, go through the uh, process of finding the permits, food handling certification, and all that other stuff. Right here, right here. How many people does that actually serve? I mean, like in terms of like I, I, I agree with the work you're doing is great, work, but in terms of how the impact on the neighborhood wide, like how many people are actually benefiting from that particular example that you use? I'm just curious. I don't know. I mean, it might be a lot. I, just don't um, I don't know. I can't give you a number for it. So. Yeah. Um, the problem that you might have to control the land too is something that nearly shut down the uh, uh, church's kitchen over on Jones Street. Cleanliness. Because if you're going to have a kitchen, you've got to keep it clean. And people who come in and want to cook a meal may want to leave and leave it a mess. Then you have to have a cleaning crew come in. Um, which is a, which costs funds you may not necessarily have. If you do a community kitchen setup, you have there again, you have food storage, you have all kinds of things that have to meet code. Right. And if you don't meet code, the city can close you down. That's why half the restaurants you're talking about got closed down. Yeah. You probably need because to because so I think we need to move on. Did you want to like wrap it up? Wait, 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 one more second. Okay. Um, so. A lot of these are all great. Again, the town hall meeting would be the best spot to get more into those details. Uh, so what we'll do real quick is just do a show of hands in terms of each one of these proposals you'd like to see. Um, if 
Uh, so let's go ahead and go with a kitchen. If everybody um, who thinks the kitchen would be the best spot, best use of that retail space, please raise your hand. <laughs> 